Hello Taurus. Welcome to this special series on love called Can This Relationship Be Healed? And it's not only for relationships that are going through a rough patch, but also for people that have been estranged from a partner and they are harboring the desire to get back together with that partner. I have kind of uh, given a disclaimer though that this is not for relationships involving physical or extreme mental abuse because I, I do feel that that is a separate category and that might require some outside intervention perhaps uh, in the form of counseling or what have you but definitely and maybe even you leaving well I wouldn't say maybe I think that it's always wise to, to physically remove yourself from that environment while you're trying to work things out, if you decide to work things out. But this is more for the typical situations that arise. And I had mentioned addiction. And not all times can you stay with a partner who has some type of addiction, though, either. So, of course, um, that is very... Uh, specific to each individual relationship but uh, infidelity is another big thing and um, and just differences in temperament differences in you know life goals and sometimes children can drive a wedge between people because either like second marriages where the families are having a hard time getting emerging or even when people have children, that can be a very big stressor. So there's all kinds of reasons why people start to have problems in their in their uh, relationship. And I just want to look at it because a lot of times I would say that people become deeply entrenched in their own viewpoint. And Taurus, you're a fixed sign, so you tend to and be very stubborn about your opinions. And uh, if you're with a Leo, that was the first uh, sign that popped out at me. But, the, uh, you know, another fixed sign, Leo or Scorpio, your opposite sign. I don't know how many of you get with Aquarians, but that's the other fixed sign. That can lead to a, um, what do they call it? A stalemate. And I was thinking of the Two of Swords in the Tarot. So if I pick the Two of Swords, that's going to be very cool. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a, a spread with, that, with the uh, Morgan Greer deck. And then I'm going to be picking one from my Crystal Visions deck for shadow work that you can do that relates to your own, your own um, self-improvement because that's all you really can control is yourself. You can ask for your partner to change, but you can't guarantee that they will. So I'm shuffling the Morgan Greer deck right now. Hmm, interesting. Oh yeah, and the other thing, thinking of with the um, Five of Pentacles, another thing that people fight about is money. So I've been getting this card over again, just like the Four of Wands, which deals with marriage and stuff like that. So that's interesting, or a wedding. Okay. And I've been getting this card over again, and that's your card, Taurus. Wow. It's the same cards. You see how I spread it out, and I get some of these same cards over and over again. Then I just cut it once. And... Okay. This deck doesn't show Seven of Swords like I like to, to see it. Um, it doesn't show the deception that it um, can indicate. Okay. So let me just look at this. I'm just going to start with the heart of the matter of what's going on with the relationship. It doesn't matter the sequence. 
Uh, Five of Pentacles is a card of financial hardship, also poverty consciousness. So in relationships, this can be um, where two people have clashing opinions on how to how to like um, manage their money. One person, I don't know if this is you or not, uh, you are connected to pentacles, but um, this could just be money situations in general. Also, the number five is instability. So there could be like this feeling, I know that uh, Taurus likes security, likes that constancy. And um, fluctuating finances could be like very stressful for you if you've been experiencing them. Usually, I, I did get a card that's associated with Leo, and I had mentioned Leo. So if you are with a Leo person, Leos are very generous as well as um, they like to spend money like water. So out of the two signs, I would say that a Taurus person is more financially, fiscally conservative. But Taurus people can spend money too. So maybe you've both spent yourself into the, I was going to say the poor house, but, but I don't mean that. But I mean, there may be this, um, this problem. And, and this, this is an interesting situation because I oftentimes think of this card as just being not aligned properly with the idea of prosperity of either and I'm not talking about uh, having a lot of money but having a good attitude about money if you are somebody who has lack consciousness even if you get money if you win the lottery there, there's a very good chance that you will waste your money until you are left without anything that you've just totally blown your money because you don't feel that you deserve it and you just are very foolish with your money. Um, so a lot of times, you know, there's that saying, burning a hole, the money was burning a hole in this pocket. That's because people really don't believe they deserve it. So it's almost like pushing away the money and being foolish with it. The other thing is being afraid of spending money because you have this fear of lack. Um, so that could be problematic in your relationship, but I would even take it a step further and talking about fear-based mentality in general and being afraid to strike out on your own if you fear that your relationship has it doesn't have a chance for whatever reason. If you feel that you're incompatible with your partner, you still may stay because you're afraid of being alone and that that was the best you could do. You're not going to find anybody else. Because this card here can speak of womanizing. Sorry, men. Not not trying to be sexist. Um, and, um, you know, you see there's several women here. The number three can indicate a... What do you call it? I always want to say threesome, but I mean love love triangle. But this could mean multiple women. And that the person even drinking, a drinking problem, um, too much partying. This is a card of partying, socializing. And the partner is just like this incorrigible party animal or barfly. That they just like to hang out in those environments because they want, they're looking for a good time but they're not necessarily responsible. You may be picking up the slack and you may be feeling like you're um, draining your resources to support somebody else and their habit, their irresponsibility, and you don't like it. Now, the interesting thing is, why did I get the Sun card? Because this is a very positive card. The Three of, pen, uh, of uh, Cups can be positive too. Now, this could simply mean that you love this person or that you have children with this person. This is also the card of children. This is associated with Leo. So it could be talking about the person's sun sign. Um, but you may really be in love with this person. We do have in the past position a very happy card. So at one time, there may have been actual joy in your family and relationship and you may really feel like you have strong feelings for this person, but these two cards, that's what they are all about. 
And again, um, I feel that sometimes this can be healed if the other person is on board, if they admit that they are doing what they're doing and if they're willing to get help if they have some kind of a problem that they can't solve on their own or if they're willing to just change their lifestyle so that if they're going out a lot, they're staying home and things like that. But if you're the one that's doing the heavy lifting in the relationship and you're reading all the self-help books and watching all the, the tarot readings on YouTube and getting private readings and, you know, whatever you're doing, going to counseling, maybe you're going to counseling, but the other person is continuing to go out and do their thing, then it's one-sided. Eventually, you have to decide how long you're going to put up with it. Taurus people will put up with it a long time. And that is problematic because by the time you've had enough, you may have wasted years. So hopefully, this reading will, if it doesn't address everything in your situation, at least make you think about whether you've been tolerating bad behavior. Um, the higher message, the spiritual message in this is re related to the Page of Wands. So this can be talking about um, feeling like a newborn baby. Now that sounds like a weird thing to say, doesn't it? What I mean by this is that Again, I, I think I, I don't know if I had gotten this particular card. I believe I did. This could be a midlife crisis where the person is, for instance, having an affair because it makes them feel brand new. Uh, I, I think I just quoted Madonna. Okay. Um, that, kind of, that kind of thing is, you would be surprised at how much that is a pull in somebody's life, okay? Or this could simply mean a sexual chemistry a, uh, or an affair that is a sexual thing. But even that, if it is a, like a sexual thing, maybe it's not even emotional. Maybe it's just a passionate thing. Sometimes people do, can do that because they feel bored in their, their life and it's like this catalyst for... Or, or maybe not even a catalyst, but some kind of a, um, I was going to say a drug, for lack of a better word, to kind of get them through some sort of, um, whether it's depression or just boredom in their life, where they feel like everything is just kind of predictable. And instead of trying to make something new happen, it's almost like the lazy version of it. But it sometimes these things come about. I think a lot of times it might happen in the workplace because that's where a lot of people are spending time these days, where it's like um, maybe they've they they go out to dinner, they're on a business trip, and the and uh, they have too much to drink, and they it's not even love. It's just something that feels exciting, and. That's and, and it's the newness of it. The page indicates the freshness of that energy, which happens to be with wands, fire. And the problem with that is that eventually whatever is fresh and new becomes familiar. So this is why I say sometimes these situations can be healed because a person realizes that it wasn't really that they were unhappy with their partner, it was that things had gotten stale. Now, if you're like with a, an Aries person, they tend to crave novel experiences, or with a Gemini, novel experiences. They want that rush of the new. And eventually, they realize that things have become predictable with that new person. And then they're like, oh, wow. Here I, I jeopardize my marriage and for, for this, for this um, kind of this fling that really didn't have a long shelf life. It doesn't excite me anymore. The, the newness wore off. 
<clears throat> now let, let me, before I go to the, maybe the kind of the predictive type of that, I'm going to just look at the shadow work. The Seven of Swords. This is a card of deceit, of somebody, sometimes this can be physical theft. <clears throat> How I think this relates to you, you Taurus, is that you have to look at your end of things. How are you contributing to this situation? How are you, how are the dynamics on your end? Are you somebody who allows a, another person to get away with things because, and you look the other way? Um, are, do you feel that somebody has used you for your money? Maybe they even deceived you in some way. This is a card that could also be about infidelity. But and this is your shadow work. Have you attracted this in the past? You have to look at your patterns. If Even if you are the quote-unquote victim, it's very important that people who feel victimized look at how you know their role in things. It's not blaming the victim. It's looking beyond the concept of perpetrator and victim and just seeing how people allow themselves to get sucked into these type of relationships. And it might be even on your end, maybe that's what this card is about, is about you being so um, smitten by the sexual part of things that you do not look at the relationship as a whole and see that, it ha that it's sound. Overall, maybe it's just a one-dimensional relationship. The advice for what's coming in is represented by the Knight of Swords. This could be a card of consulting a lawyer. Um, it's definitely a card of, you know, speaking your mind, not beating around the bush about something. Maybe you have been kind of um, a little bit allowing an, the other party to deceive and you have you have not um, really told them how you feel even and that's important too if you look the other way then you are enabling that person to do what they're doing and they're going to keep doing it um, have you heard that saying if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And that's pretty much how it is. And Taurus people like to do what they've always done. That's just kind of like it feels um, very safe and um, because of the, the predictability of it. But you'll always get what you've always gotten. The outcome, this is your card. Um, for some of you, this could be that you're going to put yourself first. For other people, this could be that your marriage will survive whatever has been happening because this is the card of marriage. The card of the, you could even say like the status quo or the um, conventional way, the traditional way. So that's um, connected to marriage. But this could also be that you're going to really become more philosophical about your life, more spiritual, and see things from a higher perspective, not just the kind of the carnal aspect of like, um, oh gosh, this is, you know, this relationship is so hot when it comes to the physical side of things. It's, you're going to want more. This is more about looking for spiritual I was going to say spiritual enlightenment, but I meant spiritual encouragement, inspiration to guide you. And, and maybe doing a little bit of soul searching. Okay, Taurus, that's what I have for you. If you'd like a private, rela <laughs> private relationship. <laughs> no, I'm not offering you a private relationship. If you'd like a private reading, um, which is... A, my love readings are different than, than this. Um, I do use the tarot for the love readings, but um, it's more of an astrological thing. 
And I find that I, I consider astrology to be more scientific, if you will, and much more tailored to the individual than this, which is very open-ended and, and perfectly suited for YouTube, though. Um, but um, the link is below for private readings and uh, not, pro not uh, personal relationships. Um, but otherwise, I wish you all the best. And, you know, this reading is for the rest of 2017. Take care of yourselves. Bye.